Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting, very unusual case. So this is an open mystery. I've consulted a number of colleagues to see what the cause of this is, including an ENT consultant, and we don't know yet. So what we have here, just to give you some context, this kind of purpley skin, that's the eardrum, okay? And on the eardrum is this kind of jellyfish kind of pancake egg thing is dead skin. And this is unusual for a number of reasons. We don't normally see this. So the skin of your, your ear canal is supposed to grow outward from the center of the eardrum, which we call the umbo, and then it's supposed to kind of migrate down the ear canal and then shed or desquamate in the first third. It's not supposed to do this. And, you know, the, as a general point, I would say it looks extremely weird. It's very well demarcated in this kind of oval fashion, like a second eardrum. And normally if you get this kind of random desquamation in the ear canal through infection or whatever, uh, it will usually be diffuse. In other words, it won't form into these kind of perfect shapes. There will just be dead skin shedding all over the place, which we've shown before on the channel. So the appearance of it is very, very weird. Um, the second reason that, that this is unusual is that this is the second time that this has happened to the patient. So I saw this guy six months ago and it looked exactly the same as it does now. So it's a recurrent thing. And um, the first time he presented to the clinic, he had had it on his eardrum for a year and it was driving him absolutely crazy. He was at the end of his tether. He'd been to a number of specialists to try and get it removed. And he was just told to you know, use drops, use drops, use drops. It'll just eventually kind of come off. And uh, it was causing a hearing loss and massively exacerbating his tinnitus. So it was driving him up the wall. And uh, upon removal, it was just, you know, like a light switch. You know, the hearing loss was abated and the tinnitus was, was markedly improved. So, but he's come back again. And it, it, you know, from memory, I can tell you it's almost identical, the presentation. So you're now seeing the second attempt here. So I had to do this in three stages, just like last time. This is after three days of bicarb. And, you know, when I saw it, I, my heart kind of sank because I thought, oh, I was expecting it to be, you know, a little bit mushy or broken up or something. Um, you know, water being a sort of universal solvent. But um, it's no different. It's no different at all. Um, so I'm just going in here with a fine end. And uh, the suction, suction machine is very low at this point. It's, you know, maybe minus 400 millimeters of mercury, something like that. And trying for a peel here. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm constantly talking to the patient and I've, you know, I've told the patient specifically to let me know about, you know, the slightest minor bit of pain or, or, or discomfort. And as you can see, you can see the eardrum starting to flex as I'm pulling on this. And again, just kind of going back and forth and I'm watching the eardrum to see how much it's um, deflecting. And again, that's not, that's not good. We certainly don't want to rip it off. You know, that would be a disaster. So we've got to go gently here, we've got to go slowly. Third attempt, this is after a week of sodium bicarb. And you may be thinking, well, why didn't you recommend olive oil? But we, really we need some kind of, you know, kind of solvent lysing action going on here. So I really need this skin to start deteriorating a little bit and, and you know, coming off the drum. So going in here, I'm gonna this time kind of catch it from the bottom. And, um, and well then we'll finally be able to get it off at this third attempt. But once again, once it was removed, patient was, you know, a million times happier. And, you know, I've, we kind of discussed this and, and various theories about what it could be. There's nothing unusual about this patient. There are no other symptoms really, other than the hearing loss and tinnitus when it's, when it's there. So he kind of, he kind of knows when it's formed, but, you know, other than this, the ear doesn't look particularly unusual. So there we go, final peel. It, the ear looks a little bit red round, round the handle of the malleus, but you know, there's no hematoma or anything like that. So final look at the eardrum, you know, aside from the redness around the handle of the malleus, it looks pretty good to me. So we, we kind of theorize different things and um, I put the, the skin under the microscope. So this is me, I've kind of as you can see, got it and, and sort of smeared it on the microscope slide, like kind of pate. 
and um, I put it under the, the microscope with some uh, potassium hydroxide. It's not fungal. So I have no idea. There's no obvious inflammation in the ear. Um, not now and not when I last saw him six months ago. So there's no redness, swelling, pain, you know, edema. There's dysfunction, obviously, because it's on the eardrum itself. But there's nothing unusual. He's not got any you know, health conditions, no autoimmune conditions. So it is, at the moment, a complete mystery. So if you have any theories, anything, any ideas that you want to throw out, please leave them in the comment section below. We, um, you know, we need some very clever people to give us an answer. So we need Vic Veer on the case. So if you could go over to Vic Veer's channel, get his attention, maybe he can make uh, a reaction video to this video. That would be very, very cool. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if there's an update to this patient, if he comes back again, then I will certainly upload an update. Um, but uh, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys on the next video.